Hey there, I just wanted to check in with you guys, do a short little video. Uh, it's raining really hard here this morning. We had some thunderstorms and it was pouring. The rain slowed down a little bit, but it's still coming down pretty hard. And I'm thinking there's gonna be some good money out here. So I just wanted to record a little lunch shift for you guys to see how it is. The lunch shifts I've been having recently, like, you know, beginning of the year, January, beginning of January, it's been really bad. Like I've been averaging maybe $20 an hour at best for the lunch shift. So I'm thinking, I'm hoping it's gonna be a lot better because it's raining right now. So I start at 11.20 and I'm gonna go probably for two hours. I'll give you guys a breakdown of how much I made and stuff. Um, the first order I got was pretty good. It was like 15 bucks for five miles, two different pickups, but one drop off. The only bad thing is the first restaurant made me wait like 10 minutes. So I'm pretty sure that messed up my hourly, but it's cool, we're gonna get this done. So as you can see, it's not really raining too hard right now, but you know, it's still coming down. Whenever there's a lot of rain, there always tends to be peak pay. There's a $1 peak pay right now in my market, but it says dynamic peak pay, which I don't think I've ever seen that before. Have you guys ever seen the dynamic peak pay? Basically, like there's no time limit for when the peak pay starts or finishes. I guess they just turn it on and off whenever they please. I don't know. All right, so I dropped off those orders. And of course, you know, it was the apartment complex. The guy didn't leave any instructions on how to get in. No gate code, no instructions how to find this apartment. Thankfully, I followed a car in, but still took me longer than expected. Took us 35 minutes to do that $15 order. It would have been 25 minutes if that restaurant didn't make me wait 10 minutes, but it is what it is. I just accepted another order, four miles for $9. I am gonna have to do a round trip because it's kind of going out, you know, into the middle of nowhere where it's a bunch of warehouses, but there's a lot of highway miles in that eight miles. So eight miles round trip. I'm hoping to knock out this order in 20 minutes. Look at this nice Porsche, man. And the 392 Hemi. So I'm dropping off at Western Express, which is a trucking company. And I've actually looked up their rates online before and their drivers are getting paid shit. Like it's some of the lowest rates I've seen. It was like 35 or 40 cents a mile, which is horrible for the trucking industry. So I'm like, okay, there's no way, there's no way that Porsche was a driver's car. Like it's probably like the managers or like a brokers or something, you know, I doubt the driver's gonna be able to afford that $120,000, $130,000 Porsche getting paid 40 cents a mile. All right, so that last order that was eight miles round trip, I was able to do that and get back to my zone within 20 minutes, which was my goal, nine bucks for 20 minutes. Shortly after I got back, Uber Eats sent me an order from Chick-fil-A, I believe it was 3.5 miles for like $7 and something. And I took it right away because Uber Eats has been sending me trash all day. Like it was a decent order. And before that they had probably sent me like 10, 20, just horrible orders, which I just had to decline right away. It did kind of stop raining. Like it is sprinkling, but nothing major. But you know, I'm only planning to go for another hour. So hopefully the orders don't slow down. I can still get some good orders for the next hour. Keep my hourly rate high. So right after I dropped off that Chick-fil-A order, I got a request that was kind of high mileage. It was 13 miles and it was picking up in downtown, but it was coming back to the area that I work and live at, which is right outside of downtown. So it was 13 miles, but it was paying $20 and it's alcohol delivery through Drizzly, which I don't know if you know, but Drizzly is a company that does alcohol deliveries and they contract a lot of workout for Uber. And whenever you get those Drizzly orders, you see the upfront pay, the upfront tip right away. They can't take away the tip, they can't tip bait, and you don't have to wait an hour to get it. You get the tip and the full payout right away. So I took it, because I know I could knock it out pretty quick. And on the way there, I got a stack, which was basically $10 for just a burger and some fries. So I stacked that on top of it and we'll see how fast I can knock this out. And I'm thinking hopefully I can knock these two orders out within like 40, 45 minutes. So I ended up dropping off both of those orders and it took me about 36 minutes. And I think it was about $30 that I got from those two orders. So if you do the math on that, that's $50 an hour average. Now, after I did that, I took another order, which I'm doing right now. It was about $8 for five miles. And once I complete this, it's probably gonna be around 1.30. So I don't know if I'll keep going. I'll probably just call it a day or I'll start driving back home, which is like 10 minutes away. And if I get something along the way, I'll take it. If not, that'll be the end of my shift. All right, so you guys know how I was saying that the alcohol delivery was gonna pay me 20 bucks for 13 miles. That's what it was showing on the app. And it was showing like a $15 tip. Cause so I guess Uber Eats shows the tips now. I don't know, I've never seen that before. But anyways, I thought they couldn't hide the tips or not show the full payout when they ordered through Drizzly, when the customer orders through Drizzly for the alcohol delivery. But I guess I was wrong because I just checked my app and they actually left me a $47 tip for that alcohol delivery. And I guess it kind of makes sense because if you really look at the items they ordered, I think they probably ordered like a few hundred dollars worth of alcohol. And it was going to this big luxurious three-story Airbnb by downtown. 
So it kind of makes sense. But yeah, $47 tip on that alcohol delivery. And then I also just dropped off this Party City order. It was a bunch of balloons going to the church right here. It was kind of high mileage. It was 13 miles, but it was paying about $18. And I basically had calculated that once I drop it off, I'm going to be the same distance away from home that I was before I took the order. So it made sense to me. It's about two o'clock. I worked for two hours and 40 minutes. So I'm going to calculate how much I made and then give you guys a breakdown of what I made and my hourly pay. All right. So all the tips and everything came in. So I want to give you guys a final breakdown of how much I made in my hourly. But before I do so, I just want to say that this was probably the best shift I've had in over a year. Like even if you include dinner shifts, I haven't done this good in a long time. And I think it's because it was raining and then definitely because of that huge alcohol delivery I got with the $48 tip. Even if I exclude the alcohol delivery I got, I would have still averaged about 26, I believe, which is a lot higher than the $20 an hour I've been averaging lately for the lunch shifts anyways. So it would have been a good day either way because it was raining and then I got blessed with that $47 tip on that alcohol delivery. So definitely not a normal day for me, okay? Altogether, I worked two hours and 40 minutes and on DoorDash, I made $42.25. And then on Uber Eats, I made $77, which is a total of $119.25. And if I break that down for the hourly, it comes out to about $44.83. So definitely a lot higher than normal. Like I said, I got lucky, but you know, I'm not complaining. I'll take it. 